Hi, and welcome to Support TV. I'm with Shane Tui from Perth in Australia, who's a podiatrist and uh, an acupuncturist. Is that the right phrase? That's correct, yes. I'm registered as both in Australia, podiatrist for 30 years and a bit, and uh, acupuncturist for 20 years and a bit. So you're over in the UK, Shane, yes. and you're, you're doing a series of courses here. I am. Um, how, how did you start as an acupuncturist? So, so 100% I threw myself into musculoskeletal the side of um, podiatry and after about 10 years of that I thought I needed something more to get the results that I wanted so I started, uh, sorry, there was a, an acupuncture course available and so I went and did that then. So, so you found that you were you were treating the, the usual kind of musculoskeletal problems like knees and hips and yeah. lots of low limb issues yes. and you felt there's a little bit of a gap in your treatments armory in, and yeah. you found something different in the results so so um i mean the main the main therapy was orthotic therapy you know and otherwise you're doing some exercises and some stretching and so on and so um often we only get you know like partial results people would be half better or three quarters better and that would be as far as the podiatrist was concerned well that was the result that you were satisfied with, so I wasn't satisfied with that. And then 20 years on, you're still using it, you're traveling all over the world now, yes. teaching new skills, mm -hmm. and uh, would, you, would, you, would you still recommend it for podiatrists to, I mean obviously you would, because you're teaching it, but yeah. you know, why, why would it be useful, why would it be useful for someone like me, I mean I'm a musculoskeletal podiatrist, yes. why, why would it be useful for another podiatrist who's maybe looking at one of your courses okay. and thinking, shall I, shan't I, what would you say? So, um, there is, with, with acupuncture, say, pretty much you're treating pain. So, and sometimes, you know, the diagnosis is less relevant, you're just treating the pain itself. So, if you can diminish and reduce the pain very quickly, then you can go on doing whatever else you're doing. So, um, it gives a... There's actually parts of the, of the acupuncture that really short circuit the normal medical system I think where okay. really you're getting very quick results or you're getting results in conditions that you wouldn't otherwise have got results in. So give us, concerned. give us an example of um, the type of things that we can treat with acupuncture. Yeah so with um, really recalcitrant uh, heel pain um, despite uh, uh, you know regularly seeing people they they've already got their orthoses, they've had their orthotic therapy, they're doing their stretching and they're bouncing up and down and all whatever else they've been given and, um, and I'll produce the results with the acupuncture. Yeah. So something else is needed for the pain control? Yes. Because sometimes you're looking at uh, a patient's improved mechanical position, improved gait, improved pelvic position, but they're still experiencing some pain. Right, and you, you just can't quite put your finger on why it's... See, what, what they've got, there's two things. They've got, they've got tissue damage and sometimes the tissue needs help to heal and repair. Um, and also there's tight tissue and so on. Tight tissue doesn't necessarily resolve just because you've reduced the, the stress on it. It's, there, it's been there for a long time and it doesn't just go back to normal quickly. Yeah. In fact, maybe, maybe never unless it gets some extra uh, yeah. input. Yeah. Because I know lots of podiatrists are starting to use acupuncture now, aren't they? Yes. Things like scar tissue and the pain relief. Yes. So okay. tell us a little bit now about the, the courses, because you've been on a series of courses here in the UK currently, and you're going to be back next year. Tell us a yeah. bit, little bit about that. So, so the first thing is if podiatrists are going to be using acupuncture, they should be the best. Yeah, the, indeed. There is doing yeah. it. Because yeah. we, we want to raise the bar. For the, for the lower limb condition. So there are some, you know, I'll, I'll say just dry needling workshops around and training courses that I think give you a very minimal and, and um, uh, you know, low par yeah. uh, access to the, to, to the treatment and um, the workshops that I do are very thorough so yeah. we're, and we're not just treating uh, musculoskeletal conditions, we're also treating medical conditions that you, you're facing including your know, neuropathic pain for example but you can be using acupuncture for healing um, other conditions as well. So. Now you've just hit on a, a real hot topic there, yes. this dry needling of, of rucas. Yeah. So obviously you're using oh, the needle. See, is, yeah, we, is there a dif difference there? Obviously the, the there, there is, there is. So, so unfortunately th this treatment where you, you're doing repeated um, insertions of a needle into a veruca has been called dry needling. I was doing it more than 20 years ago um, and we weren't calling it dry needling 
there. And so the, the, it's been resurrected or come, become favourable again, but, but they're calling it dry needling, which is causing confusion. Even though the, so dry needling for 30 years has been used to refer to treating myofascial trigger points in muscles. Yeah. So they're two separate things. Okay. Um, so there's a little bit of confusion. Can you, can you give us a little bit more clarity uh, why the confusion is there? Well, if you're treating a Veruca with, with that system, you're using a hypodermic needle, yeah. and you're doing multiple insertions in, into it for, you know, there are a number of reasons and explanations of why you do it and why it works, but it certainly helps resolve a Veruca very quickly. Yes. Um, and that's quite separate from, uh, it's not the same as using acupuncture needles. You, you could also use acupuncture needles to treat a Veruca, and it wouldn't be yeah. like that. And I don't necessarily treat Veruca anyway with acupuncture, but it could be. Can you use the, the same needle on different sites? Let's say you did acupuncture on, on one area of the body, yeah. and you wanted to use acupuncture on it. Can you use the same needle, or do you recommend a, a separate needle every time? Yeah, for each insertion, it's a separate needle. That's, yes. that's basic. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, that's another rule that's been broken regularly on coming across that. There, there are courses where they're, they're actually using, you know, reinserting needles, you know, only on one person, but nevertheless, I've got plenty of photos to show people with um, little uh, infections at, at the side of every insertion. So, so the same needle in different areas is an absolute no-no. That's a no-no. Fresh, clean needle every time. Absolutely. So sterile procedures apply even in acupuncture, of course. Yeah. So uh, the a sterile needle inserted in the um, the usual manner of acupuncture um, uh, does not cause infections. So you're, it's not that you're you know, scrubbing down before you do it. The, the, um, when the needles, a sterile needle goes in single time in the appropriate way, it's not going to be inoculated sufficiently to cause an infection. Okay. It's only when it's been reused that it, then it will be sufficiently inoculated to cause an infection. So, um, podiatrists have the underlying medical background to in skin penetration, uh, wound healing and so on to use acupuncture at a higher level. A lot of other, um, say, therapists who are using needles haven't got that background training and they, it's assumed sometimes yeah. that they have when they haven't really. So, I mean, the worst thing I've been coming across in Australia, I haven't come across it here, I don't know whether it happens here, is uh, needling through clothing. Okay, right. <laughs> I, can, you know, I can imagine it goes on, but you it, goes on, it goes on, and, and um, so by professions outside of podiatry, although unfortunately this year I did hear of the first podiatrist I've come across who, who had been needling through clothing. So okay, that was not very, recommended. Very disappointing to hear that. Yeah. Um, okay. But, you know, the, the, obviously the influence had come from outside. Well, that's why we've got you in the UK this time, uh, Shane, uh, to keep our standards high. Yes. And keep us at the forefront and raising the bar. Tell us about courses for 2016. Um, I haven't got dates confirmed yet. The possibilities are Birmingham, Edinburgh and Ulster at the moment. So that's very exciting for me. I, you know, that's We're definitely coming back. I'm definitely coming back, absolutely. Well, Shane, thank you. Thanks for visiting so far. I hope you enjoyed the curry last night. Absolutely. And, and, and the training I've had with you as well. Yeah, we've done some running as well, haven't we? And we've done some running, yeah. And tonight yeah. too. Yeah. So I'd like to thank Shane for his insight into acupuncture, some do's and don'ts there. And uh, we'll, we'll do this again next year. Terrific. Yeah, look forward to it.